It's early May and we finally have a beautiful sunny spring day after about half a week of rain and cloudiness. So I thought I'd take this day to walk through this beautiful Ohio forest and show you some of the native wildflowers that are coming up. One of the first is this, which is called Mayflower. And oftentimes it'll branch into two leaves and in the middle a little white flower grows and eventually this becomes a round green fruit. Now this is actually toxic to eat, but if you wait until about after August when the fruit becomes yellow and shriveled, then it's ripe enough to eat. But you should still only take a few nibbles and uh, not gorge yourself on them. It's a really beautiful flower, especially when it first comes up and there's these beautiful tiny little sprouts poking out of the dirt. This delicate little flower with these distinct three leaves and three petals is one of the staples of Ohio really. It's called a trillium. This is a white trillium. There's other kinds with uh, maroon colors and different patterns on the leaves. And these are actually edible if you cook them, but I would advise against it because oftentimes trilliums are pretty rare and uh, rather delicate, so it's best not to pull any that you don't need to. But it's very beautiful and just such a treat to see one growing in the woods. So right here, we've got what's known as spring beauty. And one of the characteristics you'll notice is that coming off of this stalk are just a bunch of other little flower buds. And it's got these very thin little leaves and a slightly reddish stem. Flower is white with these pink streaks in it as well. And actually this entire thing is edible. And next to it, growing in the soil here, is what's called jewelweed. Now it won't be until later in the summer when the flowers actually come out, but there's these orange looking flowers that sort of look like parrots on, uh, from the side. But you can actually break the stems of these plants and rub them on bug bites or you know poison ivy rashes or other similar things and it will soothe your skin. And also the seed pods later in the summer, uh, if you just like touch them between your fingers, they'll pop just like popcorn kind of out of your hand. It's really fun. Nature's bubble wrap, I say. So this plant here, pretty distinct looking as you can see. It's got these opposite leaves. And on this flower here, you can see the little flower buds dangling off from the stem. Now this is called Solomon's Seal. And there's a very similar looking plant with the same sort of leaf arrangement called Solomon's Plume or False Solomon Seal. But instead of having these flowers which grow underneath every leaf, it'll have flowers that sprout out the end. But actually, this plant, Solomon's Seal, if you dig up the tuber underneath, you can eat that and it's a pretty good wild edible. Now this plant here, it looks a lot like the carnivorous pitcher plant. This is actually another native Ohio wildflower called Jack in the Pulpit. There's a little Jack in his pulpit. And uh, it's got these three leaves and the flower itself has this very distinct looking shape. And uh, I just think this flower is a good example of how a place like Ohio, which might not seem like the most uh, naturally exciting place to go ha hiking and camping actually has a lot of incredible wildlife and biodiversity. Nearby this plant is this little guy which is called sticky willy or cleavers. It's got these tiny little hook like hairs and as you can see it just sticks to your clothes. And if you cook these up, 
Just put them in a pot, stir them around on some heat. It's uh, actually quite a delicious vegetable that you can eat. This little guy here, with its heart-shaped leaves here, is a yellow violet. And I've got here the more common purple violet. And these are edible. You can pretty much eat the whole thing. And uh, I've heard you can mash them up and mix it with honey. Uh, and that it has a slight vanilla taste. And my friend also showed me a little game you can play where you hook these two together and try to see whose flower stays on. There you go. This flower, unfortunately, the flowers have already fallen off. But for a short time it has these white flowers with four petals. And these leaves are pretty distinct. They've got these serrations. And it's that way that I remember the name, which is cut leaf toothwort. I've heard the leaves being called, uh, looking similar to a Japanese maple or marijuana. <laughs> but I don't know, I think it kind of has its own look. But you can dig these up, and if you eat the root, it's got a very uh, peppery or sort of horseradish taste, which is an exciting flavor that you don't often get in the wild. <laughs> I think I'm gonna end our walk for today with this flower which is called bloodroot. Now this particular plant doesn't yet have the white flower which will bloom coming out yet. Flowers are these radial white flowers with uh, multiple petals. And the leaves, I just love the way these leaves look. It's got a very distinct and elegant look. Uh, kind of reminds me of like a lily pad or a Rorschach test or something. And while you can't really eat it, the root does have medicinal purposes. and. Uh, it gets its name bloodroot from the fact that when you cut the root in half, this dark red liquid comes out and it looks a lot like blood. And uh, people have used this plant to dye cloth and things like that before. Really beautiful plant. Uh, I just love seeing it in the woods. I used to walk through the forest and all I saw were the trees and a bunch of green stuff on the ground. And I sort of just saw it as all the same stuff. But when you learn to identify plants, you really, really gain an appreciation for how much biodiversity you can find in a forest like this. This woods is not a very big place, but uh, it's got a lot of good native plant life. And I'm just really thankful to be able to hike through here and ease my mind. Places like this are not only good for the environment, but they're good for our personal selves. <laughs>